Uh, just a word about rechargeable batteries. This is a, <clears throat> a mobility scooter type battery. Uh, it's 12 volts and uh, I think it says 30, 33 amper hours or at least 24 amper hours. Let's look at that. In other words, you can draw an amp from it for 24 hours. That's, that's a general thing. You don't normally do that. Um, ideal if you get the special charger for it, but Maplins will do one for that. This is a battery from Maplin's lead acid uh, battery. Certainly get a, tra a charger from, um, from Maplin's to do that. If you look at the terminals, I've actually modified this one to take uh, the spade terminals, and I'll show you more about that in a minute. This particular one already has the spade terminals on it. This is a uh, 12 volt, uh, 4.2 ampere hour battery. Um, it will deliver an amp for 4.2 hours. That's basically what it is. Um, the amount of current drawn by the circuitry we're dealing with is, is, is way uh, smaller than uh, an amp. So um, this is just a guide, really. Um, more about that in a moment. In terms of the terminals, you'll see on there, there are spade-type terminals. Uh, in order to use either of these batteries, you need a voltage regulator. The simple reason for that is that when they're charged up, they quite often charge up to 14 volts um, and discharge down to about nine before they actually stop the circuitry working, before they're completely drained. Um, what the vo voltage regulator does is it keeps the voltage constant throughout that discharge cycle, and that applies to both of these. So I've uh, produced a number of voltage regulator uh, setups like this. This one with the spade terminals will go on either of them, and it delivers 12 volts to uh, one of these. Here's a view of the uh, spade terminals. Um, they're quite easily made. There's no great skill in that. The only skill you need is to take the insulation off the end of the wire. Um, maybe I'll demonstrate that in a bit. But those spade terminals just have to be the right size, and any doubt, Maplins are always a good guide for that. In terms of the voltage regulators, I've always built um, a fuse holder in there and I, I always include a couple of spare fuses with the circuitry in case you, you actually short circuit it. There's nothing worse than being in the field and, and, and having a, a slight short circuit, which is relatively easy to do without the ability to recover from it. This uh, socket is typically um, a cigar lighter socket kind of thing, uh, typical 12 volt power supply for cars and caravans. Um, there's the plug that would go in it, and there's the um, the delivery aspect of that. that. That's where the power comes from. Now, there are various ways of, of producing the power. In fact, if you were to use mains, this is the kind of setup that you would use. There's a, 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 a mains power adapter, uh, 240 volts in, um, and out the other side. Uh, this one happens to have been modified slightly, just with a different plug. 12 volts so you will be able to use that in the same way as using this uh, from a car 12 volt supply the ability to use the mains power supply is ideal when you're testing this thing um, in, in the workshop or whatever uh, making sure it's okay before you take it out into the field this is typical of the kind of power lead uh, which you can buy quite easily. Uh, again, Maplins will do that. They tend to be a bit expensive, but, but there we are. Um, so that will plug into the socket, deliver 12 volts there. However, um, you can buy a sort of double barreled version of it. The advantage of this is that you can have a display which tells you what the voltage is. If there's any doubt in the field as to whether the battery is delivering the right power, this is a good way to actually check. Connecting up the, the battery to the uh, voltage regulator is fairly simple. The spade terminals go together. <clears throat> you have to be relatively careful with that. Don't be sort of cavalier with this. Um, so now we'll have 12 volts available here. Um, we could put the single one in, but let's just try the, uh, the double barrel one because that should be able to, to tell us approximately... Well, there we are. It's got... Uh, 12.1 volts being delivered from there. We can now plug the real cord in and uh, power the circuitry we're dealing with through this. 
Another very handy item, um, again you can get something similar from Maplin's, not quite the same, quite expensive from Maplin's. But here we have a, a socket for the power lead um, and a three-way distribution branch. Uh, you can get them in, in four ways, eight ways I think, um, for the uh, uh, home security uh, type thing for powering lots of different uh, cameras. Um, that is a handy thing to have because we'll need to deliver 12 volts to more than one place. Checking on the state of charge is a handy thing to be able to do. And this is a bit of kit, again from Maplin's, I'm not sure, £9, maybe a bit more. But you would uh, connect up uh, the black part, obviously, to the uh, negative side. And you would use the probe... I prefer to go on the on the good side of the fuse and check the state of the charge of the battery. You'll see this one, it's just about over half full 12 volts. Let's just check the other one. Now that's showing to be uh, fully charged, so that, that, that would be ready to go. So this is a handy thing to be able to have to check the batteries. Uh, the battery terminals may be a problem depending on which battery you get. So here is another uh, voltage regulator circuit. It's slightly different, it's just got longer wires on. But rather than have the spade terminals, I've gone to a terminal block there, straightforward conventional thing. Um, the wires taken out from that can now go straight to the... To, you have to get the polarity correct, of course. Straight to the terminals on the battery. Um, you see there's a fuse in there which is important um, I would not usually have as much wire on there you, you need the fuse as close to the battery as possible for safety reasons but you would just need a nut and bolt arrangement there to connect those up so that might be a handy, um, a handy alternative to the spade terminals just to give an illustration on the um, the MP3 player, uh, here we are, the sound is downloaded via a PC through the USB cable. Um, when it plays, it will normally play to a set of headphones. But here I've just taken a headphone lead, the uh, cream coloured one, and I've joined it to an audio lead uh, with the yellow plug on the end. This is an RCA or phono uh, plug. The reason I've done that is it, that plugs into the amplifier. Um, Normally, the MP3 player would have a one and a half volt battery. But as you can see, I've taken a wire out from the battery terminals. I've soldered the wire on. I've taken it into this box of tricks here. Again, it's another voltage regulator, but this time we take 12 volts in there and we get one and a half volts out there. Right, so we, we can't put 12 volts on this. So the 12 volts goes in there. The circuitry magically transforms it to one and a half volts, which keeps this going. This is the um, amplifier, the audio amplifier, which uh, purchased from Maplin. You see, it says that it'll do 6 to 16 volts. Uh, ideally, it's talking about 12 there. It's quite a powerful amplifier, and because of that, it produces a loud noise. Now, I've connected up to a, a loudspeaker. It's a, just a cheap loudspeaker I've got from a charity shop. I've, I've modified the wiring slightly because this, this was mains driven, but it, uh, I've just taken the two wires out of the back via a terminal block this length of wire between the uh, amplifier and the loudspeaker is something that you would have to consider you may wish to purchase a coil of this stuff which is basically bell wire um, low voltage um, uh, 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 extension wire for, for, for a loudspeaker w w whatever but the length of that will depend on your situation there so what we would do with that is that we would take the mp3 player the audio output will go into the audio input there. So that's that sorted. And we now have two power inputs. We need to power 12 volts into that and 12 volts into that. And this is where the multiple socket comes in. So we have three available. That's, that's a spare in case we decide to do anything else. So we'll plug that in there and plug that in there. And we are now ready, and there's the main power lead there, we'll go in there, and that will plug into our socket once we've got the battery sorted out.
it just now remains to uh, connect everything up and get everything going so we'll connect the battery up to the voltage regulator plug it in the mp3 player a little bit difficult in terms of getting it going but press and hold for at least two seconds and wait again for a little while and we can hear a recording of little turns now There's a volume control on here, there's a volume control on there, so it's a question of just balancing out and just checking to see which is the best. The whole thing can now be put in the box, taking care not to short circuit any of the wires. Um, the cable will fit in the gel run out and the lid goes on. And it's fixed down and that's uh, that's pretty pretty waterproof you could actually leave it like that without the extension on if necessary um, placing this in a plastic bag would keep the rain off this and it wouldn't do too much to uh, reduce the sound